had another video, but one of too many things. We keep this one more short and simple. So Casey has, I am a man, Jackie. So that's a Jim Norton reference to a joke. Um, she takes some bombs, it's non-narcotic, but if she doesn't take that medicine, then she's in absolute ag agonizing, miserable pain. So, she didn't feel like doing a video tonight, and I can't blame her. And the people I do know that train don't want to be on a YouTube channel, so still working on that, but I'm making this happen regardless. I don't care if I forget some person off the street and pay them 20 bucks. It's going to be all right. So, y'all know I've trained brown belt in judo, uh, jiu-jitsu blue belt, and box two, and done some Muay Thai. Now, I've got a different thing for striking. Now, there's something that I realized when I started boxing. I trained karate, kempo karate, got to brown belt in that, a number of other striking arts. But boxing really, what really, really taught me this. Because, you know, the people who are boxing against are professionals. You know, Owen Hilton, Hilton's fell with the Y. Uh, Scott Cujo Sigmund, Roy Jones Jr.'s most recent opponent prior to Mike Tyson. Uh, he made me look like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, beat me, made my nose. You can't hit him once. You're going to hit his shoulder. You're going to hit his arm. I'm going to hit him. Is that good? Yeah. Multi division champion. Austin DeAnda. D E A N D A. Uh, the Native Nightmare. He's also 10 0 now. He's one of uh, Scott's fighters, Scott Cujo Simon. And he just won his last fight. He's going to be something special. 10 0 he is right now. He's only 19 years old. He's 10 0 as a professional. I can't do nothing against these boys in boxing. If you put me against a judo guy, if we end up on the ground, I'm probably going to stab him out. If we stay standing, I'm probably going to piece him up. If they get a hold of me and they're a high level judo guy, I'm going down. No shame in betting that. I'm a very, very, very confident brown belt standing, but, um, you know, I'm not an Olympian or anything like that, like my coach is, and like Dylan Terry, who's a national champion at our club. Um, at, Paulo Santana, my jiu-jitsu coach, he's a world Pan-American, Abu Dhabi, and a Brazilian national champion. Two times in all of those, except for Abu Dhabi, he's one-time champion. Um, jiu-jitsu, in jiu-jitsu, in my last three competitions, I've uh, been very successful in putting people on their ass. Putting them on their ass. You know, if, you, if, you, if I get a hold of you, you know, in my weight class, which I don't weigh very much, so I ain't saying a whole lot, so, you know, there's somebody who I'd like to visit who actually lives pretty close to me, I just found out. I want to visit him a lot more after something that happened today. Um, and, you know, maybe he'll accept a little, little competition with some possibility and money he could win. Uh, really going to push for it. I hope you guys will, too. Um, he's about twice my size, so I probably couldn't take advantage of Shit, I don't reckon, do y'all? I have... I have a twitch, sorry. But anyway, um, in jiu-jitsu, some of the higher bills in there, they put me on the ground, <laughs> choke me and take me out. Okay, brown and black, what am I gonna do? Um, especially Paula, Paula's an incredible teacher. Now, same with boxing. Boxing, I got beat up. I get beat up. But if you allow me to put them down, they don't take, they don't, they don't train take down. It's going to be hard for me not to take you down. If I can take down people in competition successfully that train not to get taken down, if you don't train takedowns at all whatsoever, how are you going to keep me from taking you down? You're just not going to let me? Well, that's the most arrogant, ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. Kind of like, I just get my peace, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you get your peace and go boop, 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 or whatever you want to call it, um, guess what? You're going to bop, bop, bop. You're going to be bopped your butt all the way down to the, to the cell block. And you ain't gonna have a piece there, you're gonna have to learn the heat center later. And I'm telling you, in a, in a fight in prison, for the majority, the only fights I saw that were not one on one were gangs jumping out their own. Most fights were one on one. Grappling, a lot of the stuff I'm gonna show y'all, looks incredible in a cell. Save me multiple times. Um, now, fainting is just twitching, it's twitching at people to get them to move. So you can twitch with your foot, you can twitch with your hand, you can twitch with your head or you can do all three. You can also go, because <clears throat> every time you strike, you want to exhale. That's why you hear boxers that sound like they're going, shh, shh, because every time they strike, they're exhaling. If you do, <clears throat> whenever whenever you faint, it makes people bite on it. So if I'm, if I'm standing here and you, and you and you twitch, you know, and, and I go, 
my hand starts coming forward, that lets you know, okay, my hand's gonna come forward. Oh shit, okay, I'll, I'll fake the jam, I'll shuffle in, I'll throw a left hook, get them with that. You get reads. See, brawling, the average fight is two people walking up trying to hit each other in the face. Most fights do not stay like that. After a few punches, they end in standing clinch. Judo is a standing clinch. Judo is completely the standing clinch. It has pins, it has submissions, but the standing clinch is where judo happens. The ground, jujitsu. It's the king there. Um, judo is very good too, but jujitsu is the king there. These are the three arts I train in. These are the three things that I train in because before I got out of prison, I studied this. And I studied, I, I had a notebook. I wrote down height and weight of everybody in every fight. Didn't write names or anything in case somebody would find it. But I based my training based off of what I saw and what I dealt with. I trained Kimbo Karate four hours a day, six days a week while going to prison. A lot of that. Oh yeah, that shit didn't work, okay? Just letting you know that right now. What did work was the two days a week, you know, two days a month grappling training. I was such a novice, such a beginner, such a, a, a primitive level of grappling, but it worked. So that's why I, I believe in it a lot too. But anyway, things. If you do, you should do multiple rounds of everything. But this is what I want to start you out with, and it's something you should start doing every day. At least for three minutes straight, once a day, if you do this, it's a good place to start. Whenever we get to chatterboxing, heavy bag, whatever else, you do each of these things for three minutes on, one minute off. If you do heavy bag and chatterboxing two rounds a day, you need to do feints three rounds a day. However many rounds you do your most of anything, you need to do feints an extra round. The reason Tiger Muay Thai, Peter Yan and Israel Adesanya are winning so much, they have the best feints. They feint for 10 to 20 rounds a day. You can't tell when they're gonna hit you. I got gassed out in boxing by somebody and they didn't even throw a punch at me. They just threw feints. I'm used to being on the outside. See, boxing's in close. I'm used to being on the outside of things and not being able to throw kicks to keep people on the outside. This, this little fellow's twitching at me, twitch, twitch, twitch. And I, every time he's twitching, not only am I, am I going, you know, am I going from here, <coughs> but I'm, <coughs> you can gas people out. If you can last 30 seconds in most street fights and remain calm, it's an impossible task. I know it sounds like one. I'm an anxiety case, so believe me, I know. If you can stay calm through a jab and a teep kick, the teep kick is my favorite weapon in all the martial arts for striking, um, they will be gassed out and you'll be able to take over. After a minute, 99.9% .9 of people will be screwed. So anyway, things. We'll start with the feet. So typical stance, it's a little bit better than, you know, this is just what I'm talking about for a street fight or this isn't for sport. Now also, I have shoes on. I suggest you do too. If you get in a fight in a parking lot, you will not be barefoot. Of course, it hurts more if you kick someone barefoot. You've got your feet to use as weapons, but that's not how it works. I'm not the second coming of Freddie Mercury. You know, I don't do peanut butter first off. Second off, um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't I do not do that. But anyway, anyway um, these are boxing shoes. They support my ankle better. I broke my ankle and I broke my leg on my right foot. So I've got a little bit of issues with it. But I train in these. That's what I train to kick with. I hit them on the bag, everything else. So if you put your feet together, your front foot forward, the heel, your back foot, your power foot, at a 45 degree angle. So here, step back, and then take one step out, okay? This puts at a slight off angle, bend in your knees, the heels up off the ground. Now, your right hand is right here. Left hand right here. This hand goes a quarter of the way, this hand goes three quarters of the way. Now, a feint is simply, I'll start with the feet. So, a feint is simply. The hands would be. It's hard for me to do it without doing uh, the feet, too. But. And if you're more than four foot away from somebody, don't hold your hands up. Don't be like that uh, douchebag gunner who's 10 foot away from his opponent and his hands went from here to, you're gonna gas yourself out quicker. You'll gas your arms out. When you're more than four or five foot away from your opponent, let them down. So go from here to pop back up. So you've got 
Boom. You got it. There. And then you got it. Your head. Combine them all together. So you got This foot kind of skips a little bit forward. And you get leads on people. Sorry, congestion. Um, how they react to your fades determines how you will beat them. But that's the main thing. Start practicing it. And also, you can add, ah! So every time you come forward with your foot, your hand, and your head, ah! the ah! makes people jump. It sounds stupid, it works. I know somebody did it to me. Yeah, that hunt, it works, and I said it worked on a lot of other people too. So the faint, it's the main thing you need to be working. We're doing a faint with the jam, that's all right now. We're faints with the kick too. I'm keeping it very simple right now. Faint with the jam. So there's a lot of things I'm gonna be covering. It's gonna be great stuff that I think you'll enjoy a lot. It's stuff that's worked for me. I'm condensing five years of, on average, four hours a day, seven days a week, if you were to average all together, something roughly about that. So four hours a day, seven days a week, for five years straight, um, I'm condensing everything I've learned down to a core handful of movements and pins, submissions, strikes that will get you more efficient quicker. I wish somebody had told me this shit because it would have saved me a whole lot of time. There's a whole lot of time that can be saved if you focus on certain fundamentals. Yeah, it's cool to throw spin and heel kick and all this stuff. Bruce Lee never kicked higher than the belly button in a street fight, according to him. Um, well, he, he didn't believe in it because you get your leg kicked. They put you on your back, then you're screwed if you don't let rap or anything else. Now, even then, you can still be screwed. That philosophy is good. So, you know, even though I'm capable of kicking somebody who's six foot two in the chin, that's the limit. That's about as high as I can kick somebody in the chin. I won't. I won't. Most of my kicks are between uh, the crotch and the belly button. That's where I am. The street fight, yeah, I'll kick you in the dick. It'll happen, you know, whatever. And then if you buck forward, I'm, I'm going to crash forward with an elbow and put you wide open. That's what it is. So this is, you know, um, self defense, stuff like that, you know, is what it's intended for. But it's based off the actual training I've done. I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be. I've trained with some of the best in each individual art. So, the Judo Olympian, Jiu Jitsu World Pan, Abu Dhabi and Brazilian National Champion, and a boxing WBC World Champion. He's possibly the best on the planet. So, I'm not an expert, but, and, and even more so, I'm not a natural athlete. Like, you know, I got really high stuff, but I had to work really hard for it. So the fact that I made every mistake before I finally got some of this stuff, I can tell you the mistakes not to make and how I was able to get it. You get a natural who just gets it on the first try, he's not gonna be able to articulate how to make you better at it because he got it the first try. He can't understand, well, why didn't he get it? I got it on the first try. He must just suck. A good teacher does not teach the best person in the room to become a national champion. A good teacher teaches the shittiest person in the room how to effectively make a technique work. The, the slowest, most unathletic person in the room can make that technique work if the best teacher is teaching. John Donaher, that's a quote loosely based off something he said. He's the best jiu-jitsu coach in the world. And that's his goal in every class is what he says. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. There's gonna be a lot more to come. It's gonna be on a regular basis. Sorry for the uh, unsteadiness of the channel here recently, but all is good. So, I hope you liked the video. If not, well, shit, I don't know what to tell you. I hope you liked it though.